Hello, today I'll be recapping the 2016 horror film, The Boy. The film opens and we see an American woman named Greta Evans in a taxi. She arrives at the Heelshire family manor and enters inside after taking her shoes off. She calls out but no one answers so she ventures into the house and sees a painting of a family with a young boy. Greta reaches a room with many old-fashioned toys and is startled by someone at the doorway. She meets Malcolm, the Heelshire's grocery boy and introduces herself saying she is here for a nanny job. The two chat and flirt and Malcolm states the Heelshers are nice enough and very generous. She asks about the boy named Brahms who she is here to nanny, and Malcolm pauses. They are then interrupted by Mrs. Heelsher who coldly looks upon Greta and asks where her shoes are. Greta goes to put them back on put they are missing and Mrs. Heelsher says Brahms likes to play sometimes. Later, she meets Mr. Heelsher. They then introduce what they say is their son, but Greta sees Brahms as a white porcelain doll. She thinks it is some sort of joke so she begins to laugh but Mr. and Mrs. Heelsher are dead serious. Malcolm then walks in to tell the family that their food is stopped. He shakes Brahm's hand saying goodbye and the couple looks pleased. He says goodbye to Greta and shoots her a look that says just play along. Greta then shakes Brahm's hand herself and says she hopes they can be friends. Mrs. Heelsher shows her around the house and states they've had a lot of nanas in the past but Brahm's did not like any of them. She then lays out some rules saying Greta will wake Brahm's at 7 each morning and dress him. She is instructed to read to him three hours a day in a loud, clear voice. Next, Mrs. Heelsher tells Greta that Brahms loves opera music and she should not dare to take it away from him. They eat and Mrs. Heelsher says they do not throw any food out but put it into a container on the side. Mr. Heelsher then takes Greta outside to show her the rat traps and says all the windows are broken and must stay closed. He tries to reassure her saying despite what it looks like, their son is still here with them. This does not comfort Greta but instead slightly worries her. That night, the family puts Brahms to bed and prays with him as Greta watches from the doorway. They then ask for a moment to speak with Brahms alone and they shut the door. Greta hears hushed talking then Mrs. Heelsher comes out with a big smile saying Brahms has chosen you, and she hugs her. That evening, Greta talks to her friend Sandy about how creepy the situation is. She explains how there are no neighbors, no cell service and they are in the middle of nowhere. Sandy eventually convinces her to go with it saying it's just for a few months and she needs the money. Sandy then tells Greta that Cole stopped at her house, demanding to know where Greta is. Sandy reveals she didn't tell him anything. And we don't know who Cole is but it must be someone from Greta's bad past. The next day Greta finds Mrs. Heelsher scolding Brahms because his room is a mess. She then tells Brahms that Mummy has to go and he better be a good boy. Mr. Heelsher tells Greta they are going on vacation that they've put off while caring for Brahms. He then gives her a schedule and some rules, and tells her to follow them exactly because Brahms is not like other children. The couple says goodbye to Brahms and tells Greta to be good to him and he will be good to her. Before they go, Mrs. Heelsher hugs Greta and whispers in her ear, I'm so sorry, which confuses her. With the Heelshers gone, Greta puts Brahms on a chair and tosses a blanket over his head, disregarding everything she was told. She busies herself and makes a peanut butter sandwich, occasionally walking by the covered Brahms a few times. Night falls as she heads to bed, then notices the blanket is somehow off of Brahms. She is a bit unnerved and decides to take Brahms upstairs and lock him in his room. She throws him on a chair and as he rocks back and forth we see shadows of rain on his face which looks as though he is crying. As she sleeps, she is woken up by the sound of an infant crying. She takes a candle and checks it out, then stops at a painting of the family and Brahms before he died. Greta leans in to lock at the human face when suddenly an arm shoots out and pulls her in. She wakes up in a sweat and realizes it was a nightmare, but she hears the faint sound of crying again. Greta enters Brahms' room and finds him where she left him, but she notices his cheek is wet like tears. She is freaked out but notices a leak in the ceiling and she laughs it off. Later, she calls Sandy again but she does not answer so she leaves a message. When she puts it down, it rings and Greta answers but only hears a man breathing and then it cuts out. The next day Malcolm returns to the house to take care of the food and give Greta her first week's pay. He apologizes for not warning her about the doll, then takes her to see the real Brahms grave who died in a fire at 8 years old. Malcolm states that soon after the death the doll showed up and he thinks it is a way for the Heelshers to cope. Greta says since Brahms died 20 years ago, if he were alive he would be around Malcolm's age. Malcolm then invites Greta out of the manor and promises it isn't a date since she states she just got out of a bad relationship. Greta reluctantly agrees and we see a view from a window and get the idea that someone is watching them. That night Greta prepares for the night out and talks to Sandy on the phone. As they chat, Brahms faces directly at her from the other room. Greta then heads into the bathroom and sets her dress and necklace to the side. As she showers, both her dress and necklace are somehow pulled down and she doesn't notice. When she gets out, she looks in the mirror and realizes that one end of her hair has been cut off. Greta looks down and realizes her clothes are missing too, and she rushes out into her bedroom. In the room, she finds her dressers open and all of her other clothes gone too. She walks into the hallway and calls out if anyone is there, then notices the ladder to the attic is down. Greta hesitates then grabs the fire poker and walks up the steps. As soon as she reaches the top, 
The hatch slams shut and she is unable to open it. Greta is scared and alone in the dark, but hears Malcolm pull into the driveway for their night out. She yells but he cannot hear her and he eventually drives off. Now defeated, Greta explores the attic when suddenly a figure pops out. She is so startled she falls to the ground and knocks herself out. She awakes in the morning and sees the figure was just a suit hanging on the wall. She then comes across photos of baby bronze and the painting she saw downstairs. As she flips through them the attic hatch suddenly opens and she is able to climb down. Back in her room, her clothes are somehow back in place. Later, she calls Malcolm over and he investigates the attic. He barely touches it and it snaps closed, and says that must be how she was trapped. As Malcolm checks the rest of the house, Brahms continues to stare at Greta and she looks concerned. Malcolm returns and says all of the windows are sealed and there is no one in the house despite what she thought. The two then spend some time together and Greta asks what the real Brahms was like. Malcolm says some people say he was lovely. But the talk in the pubs is that he was very strange. He says one day he asked Mr. Heelsher about the real Brahms and he replied only by saying he was odd. As the two talk, we see Brahms' room and realize there is a speaker system in it which projects the sound. This means that the doll can hear everything that Greta and Malcolm are saying. That night, Malcolm leaves and Greta lays in her bed as she talks to Sandy. Sandy is happy she is spending time with Malcolm. Then reveals that Cole came over to her house. Cole figured out her address and wants to send her an apology. But Greta says she won't read anything from him. We still don't know what happened between the two but it seems ugly. The next morning, Greta brushes her teeth but hears a child giggling in the distance. She investigates and finds a mess in Brahm's room. She moves his face but Brahm's head quickly snaps back at her. Greta wakes up out of breath and realizes she was dreaming again. Now awake for real, she opens her door and finds her missing pair of shoes sitting there. She walks to Brahm's room and sees him sitting up with the list of rules next to him. She sprints back to her room and locks the door as she begins to cry. She tries to use the phone but it does not work. Seconds later it rings though, and she picks it up and hears the voice of a young boy call her name. Greta hangs up but the phone rings again. This time the voice says come play Greta and asks why she won't follow the rules. Greta throws the phone and sobs in fear, then sees two small feet outside the door as Brahms knocks. She screams in fear and eventually Brahms slowly walks away as he hums to himself. Eventually Greta opens the door and finds a tray with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich like she made days earlier. She picks it up and starts crying hysterically. Greta then walks over to Brahm's room and realizes he wants her to follow the rules, so she agrees. We then cut to the Heelsher's vacation. Mrs. Heelsher is writing Brahm's a note which apologizes for leaving him. At the end of it, she writes the girl is all yours now and may God forgive us all. The couple then walk outside and pick up some stones which they put in their jackets. They walk into the ocean and drown themselves as they hold hands. For the next few days, Greta follows the list of rules exactly. She wakes Brahms up, feeds him, plays his music and reads to him every day. One day she is playing piano with him when Malcolm walks in and interrupts. He sees her holding Brahms and asks if she is okay. He then asks her if she wants to go out again but Greta looks at Brahms and says she shouldn't. Malcolm jokes and plays with Brahms, asking for his approval and Greta just watches uncomfortably. She declines again and he leaves, then she cries and asks Brahms to give her a sign if she is alive. The doll does nothing but when she turns away she hears giggling and looks back to see Brahms in a different spot. Greta then calls Malcolm back over and tells him the doll is alive. She needs to show someone else and they go into Brahms' room and draw a circle around him. Malcolm thinks she has gone crazy, and they shut the door to the room. When they re-enter, they see the doll hasn't moved and Malcolm thinks Greta might be sick. They try it again and shut the door, and this time they hear footsteps inside the room. They rush in and find Brahms in the corner, and Malcolm is completely shocked. The two then walk outside and Malcolm concludes it must be some sort of spirit. Greta then states she can understand the Heelsers more now. She reveals that she was in an abusive relationship with Cole and became pregnant. But, she lost the baby when Cole got violent, so she knows what the Heelsers went through. Malcolm comforts her and they kiss. They then head inside to tuck in Brahms and Greta gives him a kiss goodnight. Back in Greta's bedroom, the two kiss more and lay together. We then see Brahms watching through the keyhole of the door. Suddenly, opera music begins to play and the pair run down and find Brahms sitting with a record playing. Malcolm is completely creeped out but Greta only scolds Brahms for playing the music too loud and she takes him back to bed. In the kitchen, Malcolm tries to convince Greta to leave the manor, but she refuses. As they talk, we see Brahms laying in bed and listening to them through the speaker. Finally, Malcolm reveals that a little girl from town used to come and play with Brahms every week. Then on his eighth birthday, she visited but never returned home. They found her body buried in the woods with her skull crushed in. Police told the Heelshers they would need to question Brahms, but, when they arrived at the house they found it up in flames and Brahms died in the fire. Malcolm then says they never found the killer and he thinks the spirit in the doll is not a good one. He says the house is not safe but Greta refuses to leave because she feels some kind of connection to Brahms. That night she kisses him goodnight and says you wouldn't hurt me right. As Greta makes breakfast the next morning, she hears something in another room. 
She thinks it is Malcolm but finds it is Cole, her old boyfriend. She holds Brahms protectively, and Cole laughs as he discovers it's a doll. Reluctantly they all eat dinner together but Cole continuously loses his train of thought by looking at Brahms. Malcolm then arrives and talks with Greta who says Cole just showed up and wants to take her home. Malcolm warns that Brahms might harm him but she disagrees. That night she brings Cole some pillows and blankets to sleep on the couch. Before Greta leaves, Cole says he is not leaving without her and wants her packed by the morning. Greta then tucks Brahms into bed and tearfully says that she needs his help. As Cole sleeps, blood suddenly drips onto his forehead. He wakes up and screams for Greta and she runs into the room. Get out is written on the wall in rat blood, and he thinks it was her. Greta then sees Brahms sitting in the room and picks him up but Cole yells at her to hand it over. They begin to fight and Malcolm wakes up outside, as he did not want to leave Greta alone for the night with Cole. Greta is thrown to the ground and Malcolm barges in and screams at Cole to get out of here. Cole then grabs Brahms and swings him around as the two yell for him to stop. He doesn't listen though and slams Brahms' head causing it to shatter into a million pieces. Instantly the house begins to shake and creak, and they hear something that sounds like heavy footsteps. The lights flicker and Malcolm wants to leave but Cole shushes him. Cole puts his ear to a mirror and thinks something is in the walls. Suddenly the mirror shatters and Cole is thrown to the ground. They then hear a voice that calls for Greta, and a big hand reaches out of the wall. Out comes a large figure in a porcelain white mask similar to the doll. Malcolm realizes what is happening and says it is Brahms who must have never died in the fire and has been kept hidden all this time. Brahms charges and throws Malcolm to the side, then jumps on top of Cole. He starts punching him in the face repeatedly, then grabs a part of the broken doll and stabs him in the neck. Brahms then goes for Greta and chokes her but Malcolm manages to hit him in the head. They sprint out and run for the exit but Brahms jumps out in front of them. He knows all the shortcuts in the house from hiding in the walls for so long. Greta and Malcolm then run upstairs and hide in her bedroom. Brahms tries to break in the door then eventually takes a shortcut and enters through a closet. Malcolm manages to punch him again and they run through a tunnel in the wall. They run up some stairs and find a hidden upstairs room where Brahms has been living for 20 years. Malcolm looks for an exit and Greta notices a doll on the bed with her missing dress. She realizes the actual Brahms has been watching her this entire time. Greta then discovers the letter and learns that the Heelshers left her for Brahms to do whatever he wants to her. Malcolm then finds an escape and they crawl through a tunnel. Inside, Greta sees how Brahms would watch through the wall and listen as his parents interacted with him via the doll. Suddenly, Brahms breaks into the tunnel and chases them. They find a door outside but it takes a while to open, so Malcolm decides to face Brahms to buy him some time. The two fight but Brahms is much stronger and easily overpowers him. Greta screams as he beats him and eventually Malcolm is knocked out. Brahms then turns to Greta and uses a childlike voice saying come back and I will be a good boy. Greta says no and runs out the door, and this time he screams at her with his adult voice saying come back. Brahms shouts if she leaves he will kill Malcolm just like he did to Cole and all the other nanas he did not like. Greta sprints through the woods but decides to go back to save Malcolm. She creeps in the door and hides a knife in her pants. She then faces Brahms and in a trembling voice she tells him she did not leave him. He stands over her and we see his true size and overgrown hair. Greta then has an idea and tells him it is time for bed, just like she would tell the doll. This seems to trigger something in Brahms and he follows her to his room. She tucks him in bed as he stares at her eerily. He then says kiss, but she says no kiss for him as a punishment. Greta goes to leave but he grabs her and says kiss, this time in a more aggressive voice. She realizes what she must do and she kisses his mask and he pulls her in violently. Greta then pulls out her knife and plunges it into Brahms' side. He screams and throws her to the wall and starts choking her. As she begins to black out she plunges the knife further into his chest and he falls to the ground. Greta then runs out of the room as Brahms watches. She finds Malcolm alive and they get in his car and race away from the house. With the final scene, we see Brahms alive in the house and repairing his porcelain doll. 